Welcome to Everyday Global Anglicans. Now, at the beginning of this year, our newsreels were filled with the bushfires in Australia, which were raging um, and had been for months. And just within several months, the whole world was in lockdown due to COVID-19. And a lot has happened this year. Now, join with us and cast your minds back to two years ago, where there was a huge event um, in Jerusalem, which Gafcon held. Uh, which probably feels like a long time ago and I myself wasn't there. Hi, I'm Anna Grace. Um, I'm from London, UK and I'm joined with Ernie Dido uh, from Virginia in the US and we want to welcome you again to um, Glo Everyday Global Anglicans. And today we are talking with Jodie McNeil. Hi Jodie. G'day Anna, how are you going? Hi Ernie. Hello. Good to have you with us and here's a rector He's also a volunteer firefighter, and um, if you could tell by his accent just there, um, he is in Australia. So first of all, we want to thank you, Jody, for um, staying up so late for us. <laughs> we really appreciate that. Um, and Jody was had a, a, a role directing things at the Jerusalem conference two years ago. Um, so Jody, welcome. Uh, thank can you. you. Believe um, how much has happened since the beginning of the year and all that's happened since uh, Jerusalem. Yeah, I mean, it's been a whirlwind, really. Uh, we, we have a photograph on our wall uh, that was taken almost exactly two years ago, which was uh, the photograph of nearly 2,000 of us on the, uh, the temple steps of Jerusalem. And it's uh, sticking in, uh, stuck on the wall in our kitchen and we walk past it and, uh, and pray for Gafcon and uh, for all who were there. and. But yeah, as you say, so much has happened. Uh, things sort of got back to normal after that. And then, well, we're not even in the new normal yet. We're in the, we've said goodbye to the old normal and we're waiting for something to happen. Yeah. Is this the picture you're talking about? What's that again? Is this the picture that you're talking about? You're hanging up in the that's kitchen? That's the picture. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Great. Yeah, that's yeah, me in yeah. there. Can you see me? That, I'm that dot up there. <laughs> yeah, just a bit to the left. <laughs> This is amazing, Jody. I mean, okay, let me rewind a lot. We have a lot to unpack here. Uh, yeah, let me ask yeah. you, so <clears throat> like, like Anna Grace said, we couldn't, we had, we had to Google it. We had to look it up. Was it this year or last year was the Australian fires? Because it really felt like it was two oh, years yeah. ago. Yeah. So you are a rector and a volunteer firefighter. You don't normally hear, the, at least I don't normally hear those two things combined together. Set the setting for what you were doing in uh, last, just last year. And then we're going to rewind to Jerusalem and talk about that. But set the setting, like, where are you in Australia? What is this landscape like? I mean, I just think of kangaroos and dust and I don't know what. The, <laughs> when I think of Australia, uh, just full of stereotypes. Tell us about your, what your life is like as a firefighter and a rector. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I, I live in a place called Jamboree, uh, which is uh, about an hour and a half drive south of Sydney, and uh, uh, I live fairly close to the coast. So, uh, the, some some of the best surfing beaches in the world are only about 15 minutes drive from where I live. And uh, if you turn and face the other direction, there's a huge, big escarpment uh, with cliffs that. Uh, it, it's kind of a little bit like Yosemite, but not quite. And, uh, and it's on the other side and there's green pastures and there's, ca there's cow, dairy cows around. So this is a fairly rural so sort of setting. And, uh, and I, I'm the, uh, the rector of, uh, of Jamboree Anglican Church. It's a, it's a little church, it's a rural church. Uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have around about 80 people here across our two services on a weekend, which is an absolute delight. And uh, uh, I don't have a kangaroo, uh, <laughs> but I don't often see kangaroos, but they are out there and they are around. Uh, and so some of the stereotypes are true. Uh, we do have snakes and uh, we've got a lot of things in Australia that will kill you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Okay, so firefighter, uh, I mean, uh, help us understand in your area directly, but then perhaps globalize it to what happened in Australia in general, because it, it, it was all, it was fuzzy to me what happened. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we've just gone through a, an extraordinary season of bushfire, as you would have seen reported on the news. Uh, in, in Australia, we have uh, a very strong volunteer firefighter service. So 
We have uh, in, in the state of New South Wales, which is one of the seven states and territories of Australia, uh, there are around 70,000 people who are volunteers in the so-called RFS, the Rural Fire Service. And, uh, and I'm just one of those people. Uh, here in our little village of Jamboree, there are about 50 of us. And we carry pages, and at any particular time of the day or night, that can just buzz and beep. And then we jump in the car and head down to the station and get ourselves our uniforms on and get in the truck and head out and try and save the world. And uh, we had a lot of world to be saving at the start of the year. The, uh, the fires had, had started early last year. It was an early fire season and it got worse and it got worse. And then, well, you saw all the news. And uh, although our village here in Jamboree wasn't directly affected, uh, the fires did come to about 45 minutes drive away from here. And, uh, and I personally went out a few times and uh, was there trying to uh, protect homes and put out fires, uh, which, which is it's a different kind of hat to be wearing. Uh, you know, one, one day you're, you're telling people about how to uh, escape the flames of hell, and another day you're there putting out <laughs> flames that are licking their doors. It's, uh, right. it's quite... It's quite a contrast. That really is. I mean, is it, it, do you find that it, it's, a, it's a way of earning the trust of people and, and they, they, maybe when they hear that you're a firefighter and director, that, that, that changes their perspective of you? Yeah, I think so. I, look, I, I, it, it's just a terrific way to volunteer in the community and uh, to be a part of, of serving. Uh, certainly, I think volunteerism is, is on the decline, but, but not in some pockets, and uh, the RFS is one of those. Uh, and I, I, yeah, I've really enjoyed just being a part of the, the Rural Fire Service, and, and uh, they just know me as Jody. Uh, although the, uh, the deputy captain, when I asked him if he could help me get some stickers to put my name on the back of my helmet, he said, oh, leave it with me. And anyway, the next time I went down to the station, he had put the word rev and a cross on the back of the helmet. And he said, oh, you can take it down if you like. And I said, no, I, th I think I'll keep that as a, as a badge of honour. So uh, <laughs> I, I'm now rev cool. and, uh, and it, it is lovely. I, I, um, I get lots of opportunities to, to just talk about what I believe. And, uh, and often I'm thrown curly questions when I least expect it, but there's always opportunities to speak. And, and it's, uh, it's a great way to connect and to, to share my life. And my faith. Wait, wait, curly. What do you mean, curly questions? What do you mean by that, curly questions? Uh, um, uh, uh, difficult questions. Uh, okay, uh, that's what yeah. I thought you meant. But okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. That, well, that's probably one of those speak, yeah. Aussie kind of <laughs> phrases. <Yeah. laughs> have you? Okay. The big question: Have you ever been interrupted in a, in a sermon? Like your page are going off. Well, it's funny you say that. Uh, there, there's one time it has, and uh, it was second week into our new live streaming system that we were doing here in our church uh, i was still using my iphone as a way of being able to have the uh, um the live streaming uh, since then we've upgraded to fancy cameras and things like that right. but the funny thing was that the pager went off five minutes before the service finished and uh i was able to ignore it but it, it's actually my my iphone that does the the beeping oh, and, right. and uh, right. And what it did is it then muted the sound on there. <laughs> so <laughs> because it was a, a critical alert, it did all sorts of funny things. So that, that does happen from time to time, but uh, it, it hasn't yet got me to the point where, I mean, there, there are so many people on the, on the brigade that you can usually choose whether you want to go out for a call. So um, I can usually, they usually know Sundays is not a good day for me to be out in fires. <laughs> right, 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 yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that, that's fascinating, yeah. Um, so Jodie, before um, you, you talk about Jerusalem, you have been coordinating a celebration um, about the uh, Gafgon Jerusalem 2018, uh, which will be happening on Wednesday at, is it 6.30 local time for you? 6.30? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah 6.30 yeah. in Sydney time. Yeah. PM. That's yeah. right. That's right. Which yeah. means in London, what? Oh. Uh, yeah, 9.30 or something like oh, yeah, yeah, that? Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, 9.30, 9.30 a.m. And, and probably about 4.30 a.m. I think where you are, Ernie, is that right? That's right, that is right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's an event live on Facebook, uh, which is incredible. And you've got so many speakers, which we'll be hearing about later, and so many people Zooming in, joining in, which is incredible. Um, but first of all, Jodie, um, for, for those of us who weren't there, um, why was 
the Gafcon Jerusalem conference in 2018, which was the third uh, Gafcon conference. Um, the one before that was in Nairobi 2013. And of course the first one, uh, the first ever Gafcon uh, in Jerusalem in 2008. Um, what made uh, that conference so significant? So I, I started working with Gafcon in the August after the conference and the energy was incredible. And um, we, there was quite a few delegates from my church that had gone, so we prayed and we'd had reports and um, it was clearly a really exciting event. But can you tell us, for someone who was there, who was organizing it, why was it so significant? Well, I was uh, brought in at the last minute to help with a, a little part of the organising. Uh, the, in fact, the, the bus tours needed to be, we needed to work out how many people went on one bus tour or another bus tour. And uh, Daniel Willis, the, uh, the conference extraordinaire organiser, uh, uh, was, yeah, I was able to help out with, with that particular area, which meant that I was buzzing around a bit behind the scenes with some of the, the tours and so on. Um, but, but for me, uh, it, was, it was a remarkable, life-changing experience, I think. I, I think for, for a number of reasons. Certainly the location, uh, being in Jerusalem, uh, the place where our Lord walked and taught and, and then died and rose again, and uh, th that, that was an ex incredible context to be doing that. But what made GAFCON Jerusalem 2018 so remarkable, I think, was because uh, there was a, an incredible diversity of people across all the different glo uh, uh, countries of the globe uh, who had differences in the way in which they worshipped and, uh, uh, and differences in, in lots of little ways, from the language that's spoken to, to the way that people dressed and so on. But there was a profound unity uh, which was remarkable. We, we were there because we wanted to proclaim Christ faithfully to the nations and it really mattered that we believed what the Bible actually taught about Jesus and uh, that we believed the other things that the Bible taught about our own lives and how it is that we should be living and, and how it is that we glorify God in that way. And I, I think that as we came together, it, it, it was a profound experience to be with so many different nationalities and so many different types of Anglicans around the world. Uh, and and uh, for example, we were seated in prayer groups. So we were had, exa this is one of these genius moments of the organising. I had nothing to do with mm -hmm. it. I just turned up and sat where I was told. But, but you were sat in groups with people from other nations and uh, then you had a time during the sessions where you would meet with them and pray with them. And it was just mm -hmm. incredible to be with so many different languages and nations. And mm -hmm. uh, that, was, that was remarkable. It really was. I it sounds, I was going to say it. It sounds like a little taste of heaven. Very many, oh, <laughs> very many. So of many heaven. people say that. They they say, uh -huh. it. and it was. It was incredible. And then to have the African singers, uh, yeah. I walked into the room and they're all sort of moving. You know, we we Aussies sort of are a bit more kind of like you know hands in the pocket kind of like this. But you know, the Africans are <laughs> doing these things. It was so refreshing. It was fantastic. <laughs> That's exactly. Well, you had a, 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 a didn't you? I, see, I had the same feeling as you, Jody. You know, I was there, and for me, the first big, I was on the outside doing all these interviews, similar to what I'm yeah. doing right now. And yeah. then I had the, I finally had the opportunity to sneak away once and go in. And so you had that African choir, Nigerian choir up front, oh, yeah. and they had this. They're all co color coordinated with this amazing uh, outfits <laughs> on and just bellowing it and it's exactly how you describe it you know you had the nigerians and Afri many of the africans um moving wonderfully to it and then you had some of the awkward people like me they're just you know, <laughs> not, not doing so well the rhythm or whatever but trying our best and then you know saying say, whenever whenever a speaker would get up there quite often uh at the end of it at least they would say you know faithfully proclaim christ faithfully to the nations we will yeah. Proclaim. We will proclaim, yeah, Christ faithfully yeah, that, to the that nations. was a goosebump yeah. moment for me. Yeah, and yeah, um, yeah so I, I mean, you were also called upon at the last minute in wearing another hat. So you're a firefighter, you're a rector, you're a bus organizer, tour organizer, and then you were called on the last minute to do something else, weren't you? Oh yeah, it was. Uh, it, well, I suppose this made Gafcon just that extra little bit special for me. Uh, yeah. 
I think GAFCON was probably the most, or the, the very best, how do I put it, the, the, the best organised conference I've ever been to, and I've been to quite a few in Christian ministry, as you might expect. Uh, it was extraordinary. Uh, but then on the Wednesday afternoon, I got a message in our little WhatsApp group from the few of us from Australia uh, saying, uh, does anyone know how to play guitar <laughs> or something like that? And I went, well, oh, I can do that. And I, I quickly texted back. And uh, well, within about uh, half an hour or so, it was, it was clear that there was a bit of a problem, uh, that the travel arrangements meant that the Nigerian choir and band had to return a day earlier than was expected. And so with, uh, with very little notice, there was no band whatsoever for the Friday of the GAFCON conference. And like I said, it was the most amazingly well-organised conference I've been to in my life, uh, but obviously just something slipped through the cracks. And so I then had to get together a band of uh, people I'd never played with before on instruments we'd never used before. And we, I, I didn't have my laptop, so I had to organise all the sheet music <laughs> and everything. And we, had to, we ended up having a practice that went for about an hour, and that was it. Wow. And uh, because of the day that it was on the Friday, that we had to do about 25 songs. And so we just kept playing and playing and just seeing what happened. And it was, it, I mean, the Lord just carried us, really. And it was a, it was a wonderful privilege to be able to, to lead the, 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 uh, the singing on that day uh, with yeah. a great band from uh, people. From, we had a couple of Africans. We had uh, someone from um, uh, Ireland and then a, a bunch of Aussies who came together as well. And uh, that, was, that was a thrill. And just to clarify, whenever we are, I have just said it, you just said it, you know, we say Africans, we forgive us, uh, those who are from the continent of Africa, yes, uh, we, yes. we, we lump you into Africa because we know that you are Nigeria, Kenya, Uganda, so many different nations and distinct yes. cultures and language groups. Um, it, it really, it, 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 there was no... Um, for fear on treading on a delicate ground, there was no tokenism no. At, at that conference as far as like a, a, typo, a, a, per, a people group or a color or whatever is being put up there to represent. No, 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 no. This was, this was one big huge blend of everybody doing everything and all at yes. manner and aspect to the, from the speakers to the music leading to the... Um, uh, the small group leaders and the conference. Oh, it was it was just a. That's what I think that was what was so exhilarating about it. Uh, yeah, and and you know what was what was remarkable about the event was that that it had one aim, and that was to yeah. rally us up to proclaim Christ faithfully to the nations. Right. I mean, people say yeah. so many things about GAFCON that it does this or it's for this reason or for that reason. Right. And that, those are not insignificant. But when we got there, right. we were just wanting everybody in the world to be able to share what we had. And that is right. this taste of heaven, this, this joy of knowing Jesus. That's right. Well, what was, you were about to ask something, Anna Grace? Oh, I was, yeah, from the people that I've spoken to, you know, who often are in kind of, you know, really difficult situations sacrifice a lot have given up all sorts of things to proclaim christ faithfully it was wonderful to hear people say we are not alone we are yes mm. there were so you know and and jerusalem was you know nearly, nearly two thousand delegates but they represented so many so many more and um and yeah what what a privilege to to, to be part of that incredible mm, absolutely it was. yeah yeah. That was a big focus too. It should, shouldn't be overlooked. That I think was maybe distinguished it, it in that there there was a, a there were times even we couldn't even show some live broadcast stuff because we were showing people that it was sensitive uh, because of their mm -hmm. their situation and as part of the suffering church, and for them to stand up and say you know we are not alone, um, and and that uh oh are you getting a pager beeper? No, sorry, that's I just, that. I, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I heard a I heard a beep and I thought, oh no, fire! Um, I don't think it's me. So, Jody, what was the? There is a core document, and this is a, this is a springboard question to what you're going to be doing Wednesday. That came out of of Gascon. Could you tell us a little bit about it in your words? The core document that came out. Yes, there was a document that was read on the final day, on the Friday, and it's called uh, The Letter to the Churches. Uh, 
And it's hard to imagine how 2,000 people can get together and agree on the wording of one long document, but that's exactly <laughs> what the conference did. Uh, yeah. when, before we arrived at the conference, we were asked our opinions about various things that were important and our perspectives on them. And then uh, they were collated and a group of people who were uh, tasked with the job of, of tr sort of drafting the statement uh, put it together and then we met in separate groups for our different areas. So all of the Aussies got together and others in different uh, countries got together and, and talked about these different aspects of the document. And then that was revised again. And then it came back again on the Thursday and we heard the first, well, the, well, the sort of the penultimate draft. And then they stayed up all night tweaking the words even more and then it was read on the Friday and it was, uh, was greeted with a standing ovation. And, uh, mm. and right at the very end, the question was, uh, all those in favour say aye. Mm -hmm. And we all said aye. Yeah. And then there was the, those against? And there was nothing. <laughs> yeah, there were nearly 2,000 people in the room and, and you, could, you couldn't hear a pin drop. And so uh, it, was, uh, it was a unanimous statement. It was a significant statement, I think, for a lot of ways. Uh, it, there, there, were, there was a, an important statement from 10 years before that called the Jerusalem Declaration, and it was a statement that made it very clear, uh, clear um, statement about what it is that GAFCON as a fellowship believes about important matters in the Bible, about human sexuality and about a whole lot of other aspects related to who we are and how it is that we should live as, as peop uh, people in God's world. Uh, mm -hmm. The letter to the churches takes that and, and pushes it up a notch, and it says... Uh, we, we call upon uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury and others uh, to, to actually make a, uh, a response to what is happening in the wider Anglican Church. Mm -hmm. And it calls mm -hmm. the wider Anglican Church to repent and it calls the, uh, those who have, have walked away from what the Bible teaches about a lot of important things to, to come back. And, and so that was, it wasn't just a... a, a dare I say, a motherhood statement of nice things. It was actually a call to action and it was, a, it was mm. written as a letter to the churches so that we would unite behind it. And I think it's, it was a very significant moment and one that we may well look back on in many years to come as a, as a pivotal moment, not only in global Anglicanism, but in, indeed in the, in the Christian faith. Mm. Yeah. I, I have been hearing it referred to more and more and more just as, almost as, I don't, I don't want to over play it, but it, it, as, as landmark documents that have, that have occurred throughout history um, are referred to, you know, the Magna Carta or the Declaration yeah. of Independence or whatever. I mean, I don't, not yeah. quite maybe that uh, uh, gravity, but it, it, it is significant. And you're hearing people, it was definitely a watershed moment. And um, mm. hearing people talk about you like, oh, wow. Yeah. And I was there. Oh, wow. <laughs> that right. was exciting. So, yeah. um, so okay, now we got background, we've cleared the brush on, on that, and now going forward, here we are, this Wednesday, you're doing this celebration. Tell us a little bit about that, and then maybe share with where you're standing and what you're doing right there at this very moment, yeah. or setting up. Sure. Well, I, I was asked to help a group of people in, in Australia and New Zealand uh, to to set up our own GAFCON conference for next year, GAFCON Australasia 2021. And so we had started preparing that and planning for that, and then everything happened with COVID-19, and people were running around trying to work out how it is that you can do church and everything else without meeting in buildings and using live stream and all sorts of online virtual things. And uh, I, in one of my crazy moments, thought, why don't we do something like that with GAFCON? And we could maybe, you know, I don't know, connect everybody up and do something uh, to, you know, to celebrate the, the anniversary of the, uh, the, the, the Jerusalem 2018 event. And so I told my colleagues and they said, I don't know where you get those crazy ideas from and where do you get that energy from anyway. So you know, two, two days later, I, I checked my emails just, just today to confirm this. But I, I, um, I, I woke up at about 2 a.m. In the, in the morning because uh, I think a lot of people were having trouble sleeping around the early onset of COVID-19. Anyway, I woke up and, and suddenly it was, I thought, I know what we should do. We should do, and, and, and all these sort of event ideas came out and then I, I tried hard to remember them. Then I woke up the next day, wrote an email to the rest of the committee and said, how about this? And uh, they said, why not? Let's do it. So yeah. that was uh, 80 days ago. 
and uh, now we've uh, got to the point where it's all happening in two days' time. And uh, our own church here that I'm, I'm standing at now, uh, we, we didn't have any cameras or any technology really uh, before COVID-19 came in, and yet we thought we need to do this. So bit by bit, we were putting in more cameras and bits and pieces, and, and I thought, well, I think we can use our own little humble church here in Jamboree to host a, a, an event around Australia and New Zealand. Uh, yeah. But let's bring in some people who are beyond Australia and New Zealand. And so I spoke to, uh, to Bishop Richard Condy, uh, the, who is the, uh, the head of GAFCON Australia. Um, and, uh, and we thought, well, what, who would we invite? So it's, uh, before we realised it, we, we, we'd invited uh, Archbishop Foley and Archbishop Ben and, uh, and also uh, another special guest um, with Ashley Null. Who, and, uh, and so they are coming in, uh, they'll be joining us via Zoom and uh, a whole lot of others around Australia and New Zealand uh, to, be, to be part of this global event. There, there's own, over, I think there's over 30 people involved in, in front and behind the camera. 30 people? Yeah, 30 people. We've got, we've got at least a dozen or so people will be uh, beamed in via Zoom and, and plugged into our little video switcher that's sitting at the back of our church building. <laughs> Well, that's that's truly amazing, Jody. So, well, so what does it look like the setup for doing something like that? Or explain it to us what what you're having to do. Yeah. Well, what, what I'm doing is we, we've got all of the different people involved uh, joining one Zoom meeting, and then I've plugged in my iPad into the camera desk, and then it turns into a camera, and so another person switches and spotlights Zoom people, and then it'll switch back and forth, and then there'll be an overlay over the top. Anyway, it, 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 it works really well in my head. <laughs> Whether it all comes together <laughs> on Wednesday, you'll see me sort of with my hair pulling out and, and, and yeah, yeah. We, you know, spinning wheels of death and, you know, this, in, this transmission is interrupted. I don't know. It, it, there are a lot of, uh, lot of links in the chain and any of them could snap. But, uh, we, but it, it, if, it, if we can pull it off under God, then uh, we, we think it'll be quite an exhilarating event. Well, are you right now? standing in a place where it's going to be or yeah 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 so this is this is me here um in our in our little church um that kind of you can see see me there and uh, we've got the um well, we're actually going to have a band set up here at my my son and daughter-in-law uh, my, my, my daughter and son-in-law will be uh, we'll be playing with some friends and leading us in some music and a whole lot of things are diff different things are happening uh it, it's going to be quite an event really <laughs> and um yeah so we, we're sort of very much looking forward to that uh Aww. and and i and i think uh, if the technology you can if you if you're uh, if you'd like to pray for the technology on tuesday night that'd be great even across the different time zones um we uh, archbishop foley will be asked to join us at around about quarter past 5 a.m. So uh, oh. he might have some sleep in his eyes when that happens. <laughs> uh, so uh, I, I was quite happy to stay up tonight to, uh, to sort of <laughs> get into yeah, your time zone. Very nice of you. I, I'm suspecting we don't have anybody from Australia watching this live at the moment, but we might have people uh, live uh, from uh, watching us from around the world and other parts. And this is part of, this is an, this will be, just to be clear, this is an Australia initiative, Australia GAFCON initiative. Yeah, um, that's right. It, it's, uh, it's just something that we, we've, we, we, um, we really want to connect strongly between Australia and New Zealand. We are, we are different countries on uh, we're different islands. Um, and uh, um, in fact, I think if I press the right button on my iPad here, hang on, let's see if I can do that. There you go, look at that. Um, yeah, that's that little Gafcon cross, that is exactly where I am, which is just south of Sydney in the state of New South Wales. If you go across to the right of the screen and down, that's New Zealand. And uh, mm. New Zealand is another part of, well, it's another country. Uh, but we have a lot in common with each other. And, uh, and, and that, is, um, that is partly because we, we went to war together. You, might have, you may or may not have heard of the Anzacs, Australian and New Zealand Army Corps. We've, uh, we've got, have a lot to do with each other. And uh, so this conference that we're setting up is a way of, of strengthening, strengthening those ties as we, as we cooperate more as, uh, as Orthodox Ang Anglicans. And, um, and so, uh, but, but yeah, the, but what, what's happened is as I, uh, 
uh, as I shared it with a couple of people, I, I think it filtered up across to you, Ernie, and through Daniel and a couple of others and said, oh, this, we, we could let a few other people know about this. So I think yeah, one thing's yeah. led to another and uh, you, you've invited a few people from around the world to join us, which is nice. <laughs> well, that's right. And, and, and we're, we're just so happy to piggyback and just say, go for it, Jody, and you, you deal with all the headache and the stress of the, of the technology, and we'll just yes. applaud you on. Yay. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we really do need to be praying for you uh, because, I, yeah, I mean, yeah. I deal with live streaming at my church, and there is nothing more. I mean, it just creates this knot in my stomach, and uh, yes. uh, almost as much as, as Facebook Live does right now, which is a question <laughs> I have for you, Anna Grace. Are you seeing Facebook Live at all? Any questions or anything um, no, no, that I are coming in that. at the um, moment? Okay. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it just is, I, I just, be, we need to be praying for you as you uh, and, and the team as they pull this, try and pull this thing together, because it is, it's significant <laughs> getting all of the connections and all that kind of stuff going down. Thank you very much. Well, it's interesting you mentioned New Zealand. Uh, there, there's been a lot, they, they haven't been quiet over the past year either. I mean, a lot has transpired. Has it been a year since all the big events in New Zealand took place? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's been about a year since uh, JEBN was consecrated bishop. Um, uh, that's right. So that's that. 2019 was a massive year for the uh, Anglican brothers and sisters over in New Zealand. Yes. So Jay is going to be uh, has a role um, Wednesday night as well, right? Yeah, he's preaching. So uh, he he's going to be preaching over from New Zealand, and we'll be bringing him in via Zoom into our little video desk here, and uh, and. And uh, so I'm really looking forward to sitting under his teaching and uh, having him open the Bible. That's fantastic. Could you summarize the what what that was about, the whole J.B. Hinn and, and New Zealand thing? For those who yeah, I mean, uh, it, to, to cut a very long story short, there, it was considered necessary that uh, to, in order to remain faithful to what the Bible teaches about uh, key things, like related to human sexuality and so forth, that uh, it was not able, not possible for for many Anglicans to remain within the structures of the Anglican Church in, uh, in New Zealand. And so mm -hmm. as a result of that, uh, a, new a, not a new diocese was established and uh, Jay was uh, asked to be uh, the bishop of that. And uh, so that has meant that there are, there, is now a, there are now Anglicans in New Zealand who are part of the uh, the diocese that is led by Jay, and then there's a, another diocese there also of others who have remained in, in what was there before that. And uh, mm -hmm. obviously that's, that's quite a momentous event, and it, it's something that has mirrored many of the other struggles of brothers and sisters around the world in, in similar situations. And so there's a, there's a joy in our fellowship, but there's also a sense of sadness as well uh, that because of the, the breakdown in, uh, in relationships that's obviously happened through that. Mm. Mm. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for um, yeah, filling us in on that, Jodie, because, um, yeah, it's been a huge year for, um, yeah, it was a huge time for, for New Zealand and yeah. lots of pain and sadness. And it was, yeah. are, Amazing interview that uh, Bill McSteel did the day. It's on our YouTube channel. And yeah, he expressed such sadness and grief, really, mm. for leaving. So, um, but wonderful to see how um, God is um, is sustaining them and and how the different networks have been involved with that with that new diocese. Um, it's fantastic to see Gap on um, and the primates all, uh, all, yeah breathing in and, and really nurturing and looking after them. It's amazing. Um, tell us about some of the other people who um, you're going to be have, having on the, um, at the event on Wednesday. Yes, we're, well, I, I mentioned al already that uh, um, Archbishop Foley Beach and uh, Archbishop Ben Quashi will be joining us and uh, they'll, they'll come on and talk a little bit about uh, what is happening with GAFCON globally and filling us in uh, with some of the situation uh, of what's happening in Africa and, and particularly in, in Nigeria. I'll be asking um, um, uh, Archbishop uh, Kwashi just to, to tell us how GAFCON is uh, strengthening Christians in Nigeria. Uh, we'll also uh, have uh, Ashley Null, uh, who'll be, uh, Canon Ashley Null will be uh, speaking and answering a few questions. Uh, from, a, from a sort of perspective of historical Anglicanism, uh, he, he is uh, he's a great gift to our church as somebody who has uh, become an, an expert in the Reformation and in, in particular in Reformation Anglicanism and 
the study of Thomas Cranmer. Uh, he is going to reflect upon how he sees the letter to the church having an impact that, that may well be uh, beyond, many, beyond even our lifetime. Uh, we've, mm. I've mentioned uh, Jay Behan as, as our preacher. That'll be terrific. Uh, uh, we'll have uh, uh, Bishop Richard Condy and also we'll have um, uh, Archbishop Glenn Davies, who is the, uh, the, the, sec the general sec no, the secretary of the Australia and New Zealand and Asia areas of GAFCON. Um, and uh, he'll be, uh, they'll be talking about the, the state of the church at the moment and, uh, and the challenges that are particularly faced in Australia. Um, Dean Kanishka uh, uh, Ruffle will be also speaking to us, uh, as, as will uh, Fiona McLean, uh, who's on our GAFCON board in Australia. Um, and we're also looking forward to Steve Maynard, who's a bishop in New Zealand as well. He'll be sharing about the struggles in New Zealand. Uh, and we'll, um, uh, uh, we'll, of course, be having um, also Bishop Richard Condy, who is the, uh, the head of the uh, GAFCON movement in Australia, and uh, he will be sharing about how things are going as well. well what, one of the things I'm really excited about is that we'll, uh, we'll be leading the service of evening prayer. Uh, it's not just a talk show that happens to be in a church. We're actually going to have a time of, uh, of corporate Anglican worship together, and uh, I'm looking forward to doing that. And, uh, and Jennifer Hercott, who is uh, the priest in charge in a town up in Queensland called Emerald. Uh, she'll be uh, looking after the second half of the service and I'll be looking after the first. And, uh, and I think that'll be a joy. Uh, we've also got uh, Suha from uh, over in New Zealand to read the Bible and uh, Tamara Purton will be doing the prayers from South Australia. In, so <laughs> we've got people absolutely everywhere involved in different things. And uh, it's, uh, uh, it, it's just, I think it helps us Realise what the G in GAFCON stands for. We really are global. Yes. Yeah. Well, I just want to remind people that, that are listening that you're listening to GAFCON's Everyday Global Anglicans, where we uh, just interview people live from around the Anglican communion to understand how God is at work. Uh, our desire at GAFCON is to equip and strengthen the church proclaiming Christ faithfully. And you can go to gafcon.org and subscribe to the devotions there or subscribe to uh, other things that we are sending out on a regular basis and following, for instance, uh, announcements about things like this that are coming up this Wednesday. Um, and uh, just also a reminder that this next Sunday, one week from uh, less than one week from today is GAFCON Sunday, which is a big deal uh, around the world where from the, from the pulpits and the churches around will be uh, people will be sharing about, you might be hearing about it within your church with Jamboree. You might be hearing about it. Did I say that right, Jamboree? Yep, perfect. I always want, in America, we, we call something a Jamboree. And I always ah, get that mixed yes. up, Jamboree, Jamboree. Um, so, uh, yeah, so you might be hearing from, from the pulpit about GAFCON to better understand uh, what GAFCON is about, understand what in the world that acronym GAFCON stands for. <laughs> Global Anglican Future Conference. So, uh, so stay tuned for all that. A lot of events happening this year, this week, as a result leading up to that. Uh, tell, I, I was just wondering, uh, Jody, just for you personally and your church mm -hmm. and what's going on. I like to hear uh, from the grassroots what's happening and how has God at work in your area and your church, uh, perhaps in your personal life and your family during these COVID times. I mean, uh, you said I, we, one thing that we discovered in just our little pre-chat. Is that you all don't even you aren't even using the the face mask things in Australia? Uh, that's that's ubiquitous here. We we have it everywhere, but every place is different. And um, what what is that like? I'm mean, so all one big huge question. What is that like with COVID? But also, how has God at work in your church and your congregation? Yeah, yeah, it's funny. Yes, I as we see all the news reports around the world. Lots of face masks, but not very many in Australia. Uh, it's just been the, the medical advice is don't use them, uh, but there are all sorts of other ways to try and keep social distancing as we talk about it and the four square metres and the 1.5 metre distance and all those right. different things. Uh, that's, that's part of our language. Uh, yeah, we, we, uh, we got shut down very, very quickly and uh, we didn't have a full lockdown as we've seen in other parts of the world. Uh, but we had restrictions that said stay home and only go out if you really need to and you can't have more than two people visit your home. Uh, it didn't take very long for churches to suddenly be t told to close their doors. We had about a week's notice 
And uh, what I did is I said, well, let's keep going. And I got an iPhone and started recording. And well, we just went straight to Facebook Live. So we've never stopped having our two regular services in full over the whole year. And uh, mm. uh, we've, we've kept doing that. And that, that has been, uh, it's been important for us because we've kept the routine and we've kept the rhythm of life and mm -hmm. people come together in their homes uh, and they, they, we, they, they sing with us, they, they hear God's word, we, we say liturgy together, we, we pray together, we do all sorts of different things. And then at the very end, we eat dinner or have morning tea, depending on what time of day it is, using a Zoom group. And so oh. we'd go around the room and we'd say, we'd have a, a particular table, we'd have everyone seated there and we'd say, well, what are you having for dinner? And, and what usually happened for me was, was we, we'd have church, we'd have the, the rehearsal for the music and I'd be there and I'd be really hungry and I'd be watching them one by one. It's like, so what have you got? We've got lamb roast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what have you got? Pizza. <laughs> pizza. I'd, what I would do for pizza. And, uh, yeah. uh, but, oh, but that kept us together. But, you know, what was really interesting was that we, we made this the decision that we were going to just stream on Facebook and that we were going to go Facebook Live and nothing else. And part of that was... We know that Facebook is a, a social networking thing and that it gets people connected from all sorts of different places. And we've found that we've got friends and neighbours from all around the world who are tuning in and watching our, our broadcast. But mm -hmm. the, the amazing thing is I, I, I'll go down and see the, the fireys and, um, and they'll say, oh, I didn't know you could play guitar. So it was clear that they'd mm. been watching our live stream. Or another guy said, mm. oh, so you're still going through Leviticus in your... Oh, sorry, sorry, in Book of Revelation. He said, you're still going through the Book of Revelation in your sermons. I said, yeah. And I thought, wow, you've come to church. I haven't realised it, but you've been yeah. there. And yeah. our next-door yeah. neighbour and a whole bunch of others. Uh, it, was just, it was amazing to have that. And so we're praying that through this we'll, we'll be able to, to stir up those, those visitors who have sort of peeked over the fence, uh, that right. they'll actually come in and stay connected with us. So that's been a great mm. sense of encouragement. I think we've still mm. felt connected, but we're also feeling missional. Uh, even though we were running church with three or four people in the building, uh, we knew that there were many more people watching than would normally be at church. So that was exciting. Mm. And, I, and I think that we are at a time when people are feeling low in hope and high in fear because there's mm. a great unknown. Mm. And uh, I'm confident uh, that this is a time when the Lord is speaking strongly about the one in whom we should not fear, the one in right. whom we can have confidence and, and hope. And uh, it, the whole coronavirus thing is, is really painful and difficult. But like many things in life, that when the Lord brings these things our way, we, we rejoice in what he has done and his sovereignty over everything mm. And, mm. Uh, and pray that he would use them to, to bring more people to come and know the great love of Jesus. And we're seeing that happen and it's exciting. Mm. Wow. That's, that's some neat insights there. That's, I think that I'm hearing that some other places too, that whole thing yeah. of, I love it, the peeking over the fence and <laughs> being exposed to something that perhaps they otherwise wouldn't. And um, you have to pray. Mm. You keep praying that, well, oh, and, yes. and we can, we can't, we don't have, we can trust, right? We can trust yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Um, that God is using this even as we speak, uh, this whole situation to, to build his kingdom. Um, yeah. Well, that's, that's, thank you for sharing all that, Jody, uh, mm. about your personal, your church and what is happening with that. Um, I think we're, we're going to, we've gone now about 45 minutes and I think we will wrap it up. I, I will say that one person uh, I have noticed has, has said something. And to those, if you are on Facebook and following us at this moment and we're not seeing your comments, I apologize. We're, um, yeah, I'm Facebook challenged. I will be, you know, here I am communications guy. I can sometimes <laughs> Facebook is loses me. And at this, at this point, it's kind of lost me. And I, if, if you, if you have commented and haven't seen it, uh, I have seen Cameron Jones from Ireland, and he's, he's hailing from there, and he's saying, um, Alex and I are watching and are loving the gum leaves. Is that gum leaves <laughs> in the back of you? <laughs> That's right. Like that? 
<laughs> yes, uh, he, he, I, he's... I would have guessed they're eucalyptus, but they're gum leaves. You're saying? Well, just the same thing. If you if you look if you look back there, uh, <laughs> oh. one of the lovely ladies in our church has actually prepared that today as a bit of a an arrangement for Wednesday night. So you've actually got a sneak preview. I'll I'll get in trouble for having shown it to you early, but <laughs> but Cameron's noticed. Cameron is an old mate of mine from Australia. Uh -huh. Cameron and Alex were in Sydney. We were at church together when we were teenagers and uh, they are now part of Gafcon Island. And we caught up with them two years ago at Gafcon Jerusalem. And uh, now they are, they are evangelizing a church into existence in Dublin at the moment. Uh, go and get on board with their story. It's a, it's a wonderful thing and something for, for our prayers and our support. So g'day Cameron, hey. g'day Alex. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Hey, just as a little uh, teaser, um, actually, we, we, we are solidifying. It looks to be like we might be hearing from Ireland during the month of August for our devotional. Um, I, I'm not going to say who, but someone from Ireland is writing our devotionals. And next month, actually, in a, in a week and a half, uh, we'll begin our devotionals with uh, Bishop Michael Nazarali. He'll be sharing, mm. uh, contributing for that. So just a little teaser on that. But the biggest teaser we want to give is for this Wednesday night. Again, it's going to be Gascon Celebration, Australasia. We're up here calling it the Down Under. You're calling it the Australia. Australasia? Is that, is that, is that yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, uh, celebration at uh, 6.30 p.m. Aussie time, 9.30 uh, London time. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. It's p.m. plus one. 9.30 a.m., right? Yeah, a.m., yeah. And 4.30 a.m. my time. We'll record it for those of you who aren't going to crawl out of bed at 4.30 and share for the rest of it. It really is going to be a power punch of, 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 of lineup um, of, of people, and we encourage you to at least join us at some point if you can. Thank you, Jody, so, so much for taking oh, the initiative. It, it's it, just it fantastic. Is, yeah, it, uh, well, it's a joy to be in partnership with so many people who, who just know what a wow event uh, that was and how the Lord was really with us and uh, we we just love to celebrate his his wonderful work amongst us yeah well you can't you, I, I, in my mind you can't put you couldn't plan it any better than that it's coming from the grassroots it's bubbling up from the grassroots from you guys and i love it that in this and yeah. these days and time that it's actually in a local church it's not in some big conference center or something it's just grounded right where the rubber meets the road in ministry uh mm -hmm. in, in the anglican mm -hmm. church and so thank you for your initiative and for your uh, collaboration. I mean, it's just been yeah. uh, wonderful. And um, I'm going to wrap it up for now, unless Anna Grace, you have a, a driving question, like does Jody surf or something at the surfer beaches or anything uh. else like that? <laughs> well, I, I've, I've got a couple of things for you, though. Right. Oh, oh, yeah. more. Uh, I can't give them to you, but but this is a this is a real Aussie thing, you know. Um, um, <laughs> and it, did you like? To, have you had Tim to answer for? Uh, um, uh. for Christmas. A while back, and I ate a <laughs> Wait, what, what Wait. are we talking about here? Okay, so the the um, what is this? You, no, what, what? Well, not quite. You 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 call them in America um, 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 cookies, probably. We call them biscuits, uh -huh. and uh -huh. uh, so they're kind of these these little chocolate things, uh, and and uh, I'll break one in half, and you, you probably can't see it from that <laughs> distance, but. Um, but I won't eat it now, but they're, they're really, really nice. And I, I'm sure Cameron and Alex over in Ireland are really missing them as well, and any, uh, any Aussies who might be watching. And the other thing I've got, can you guess what I'm going to bring out now, food-wise? Uh, a beer? No. <laughs> oh, that's your mic. Oh, wow, that's right. We, Love this stuff. Love it. this stuff. Oh, yeah, this is, this is great. Now, the thing about Vegemite is, is it, it's like Marmite, uh, in the in the UK, uh, uh -huh. but it's a little bit sort of saltier. And and the big rookie error, uh, you, usually with 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 the Yanks, when uh, people from USA come out to Australia, is they they put they spread it on like it's um, it's peanut butter. But <laughs> but the, those who know what they're doing, that you just spread it on very lightly. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So what okay, is so the difference? Of, is it saltier bread. than marmite? Yeah, yeah, it, it's saltier. So. So my wife, Mandy, when she puts on Vegemite, she'll put it on nice and kind of lightly, sort of like uh -huh. that. When I put it on, I, um, I really like to have it you know, a bit thicker like that. But to it's, the edges. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, but but if, you, if you were to eat that with the, the untrained, non-Aussie taste, it, it, you'd probably spit it out. It, <laughs> but we were, we were raised on this. We, we, from the moment that we were teething, our mothers would put it down on toast and we'd, we'd bite away on it. But it's, uh, it, it's is, great is stuff. Veggie, is it like cra crams of veggies? Why, is that why it's called veggie mite? Or? Oh, that's a good question. I don't or? know. I, 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 I had a feeling it might have been something, some play on Vegemite, Marmite, Parmite or something. I don't know. But um, uh, anyway, uh, Par Will. Uh, <laughs> but but it's, it's, again, the, uh, it's, it's the leftovers from when you make beer. And, uh, um, and um, Aussies drink an awful lot of beer, which, uh, which can, right. be, uh, uh, it can bring you pleasure, but can bring a lot of people a lot of uh, pain as well. Yeah, so um, right, right. there's a lot of Vegemite in Australia for that reason. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. No, I will eat that I later on if I. I never, yeah, like that looks good to me actually. I love salty <laughs> stuff, so that, that sounds good to me. Oh, you should well, try we're something. in the clothes now. Let, with, with Anna Grace, would you be kind of put you on the spot and ask you, would you be willing to pray for for this event coming up and and for Jody as he come down the the, the last two days? Gosh, absolutely. Father God, thank you so much um, that um, yeah, you love us. So for the faithful to us, thank you for your grace. Thank you for the gospel. Thank you for seeing Jesus. And Father God, I just thank you so much for the beautiful Catherine. I thank you so much for those faithful looks. I'm within our brothers and sisters in Australasia. And I live them to you now in all the planning and preparation the last couple of days, particularly Jodie. Thank you for this brilliant initiative, this amazing idea to celebrate that wonderful so much for it. And Father God, I just pray that um, this will, um, that, that all the technology will work, all these practical things. I just pray that your hand will be upon it all, that it will work, and that many hearts will be touched, and, um, and that we will, we will celebrate so your goodness and your faithfulness um, to us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Very good. All right, Jody. Thank we'll you see so you much. Bright and early, or late whatever <laughs> your time zone thank you so no, much like, it's been a real pleasure it's, it's lovely to get to know you, you both and, and thank you Good for night. your hard work in, in ministering through GAFCON I I love waking up in the morning and seeing on my Facebook all the, the updates overnight and things we can yeah. pray for and uh, so and the devotion so thank you yeah great all right Jody so, Good night. sleep well bye-bye yeah. thank you see you Anna Grace.